what the H, Florida is botching up the NIL once again. It's brought to you by Andy Mason, andymasonrealestate.com. Andy Mason is absolutely fantastic. Best service and prices in the biz right there in Knoxville. He's my realtor. He should be yours. So give me the latest because I, I, I read it. It's kind of complicated. I, I have a firm grasp of it, but I'm going to let you explain it, Caleb, because we are only a few months removed from Jaden Rashada showing up on campus. That would have been in January and their the NIL money was not there for him. And I mean, that's a big deal. And he ended up getting out of it, but I guess technically they could have held him to his uh, signed letter of intent. Or if you spend the night, you're considered enrolled. I learned that from the Lane Kiffin days, uh, but he was able to get out of it. But I tell you, um, this is another mess. Describe the latest NIL mess for Florida. What is going on down there? This one's way worse. This was a predatory loan, basically, to NIL. To uh, So Chicago Bears rookie Ger- Gervon Dexter signed with a speculative investment capital company. He It was an NIL endorsement uh, from Big League Advance Fund, is what I think was the collective. And he got a one-time payment of $436,000.485, which seems like if you're a high-profile offensive lineman, that seems right, right? That's about what you make with NIL money. I guess. Yeah, I think a lot of these numbers are inflated. But yeah, sure. Well, they, yeah, well, they tricked him. In the signing, he unknowingly agreed to give, to pay this collective 15% of his pre-tax NFL earnings for the next 20 years. Five years, basically his career. His I don't career. want to sound. I don't want to sound like uh, Billy Know It All, but I thought from the get go that these collectives would turn into agents. Um, now I don't know if the Spire Group is doing that at Tennessee, but why wouldn't you? You already have a business relationship. Um, but why wouldn't you turn into agents at the next level? Let's face it, a lot of the money is slotted. And you can probably um, you can probably get away with not being a great agent and get your guy the same amount of money and he trusts you. But this be is open a about case, being an agent. Yeah, but, right. This is a case where they did so without even apparently having the discussion or clearing it with the kid, right? Yeah, it's probably one of those. Again, he was a 17 year old kid, got a bunch of papers, and they were just like, sign this. And you're 17, you don't know any better, so you sign it because you're told you'll get 440 thousand, and he didn't know what he was signing. Now, you can say that he should have known what he was signing, but he was 17. And here's the thing. Whether or not you think he should have known what he was signing, I guarantee you this. The competent NIL initiatives, like Spire Sports, Dave, you and I know this. Tennessee's not letting any collective do that to one of their players at all. Spire Sports, will, Danny White will not let Spire Sports do that to any one of the players at Tennessee in any sport. Well, won't let's a strong word. You could have somebody weasel their way in. But I think they would then be forever banned from be- having anything to do with the program, right? And I don't think right. it's sports, but there are some smaller collectives out there. And um, yeah, could they try to pull something like this off? I mean, they they could once, perhaps, but I don't think that you're going to be able to do this multiple times under Danny White's watch. So a couple of people on the message board. Let's start with Lance. Uh, let UF continue to botch it up. Uh, Travis says, I hope Florida never recovers. That sounds strong to say that, but let's remember Florida was absolutely nobody before Steve Spurrier showed up. They could not win football games. They were not a good football program when they and when should they, did, they got caught cheating all the time. Yes. So, Florida, at the very least, is going through what their decade of dysfunction. Uh, shout out to Mark Nagy, but they might be going through a lot more. Could they fall completely off the map? I doubt that, but I, I don't see them because this could create a whole nother issue that they're going to have to overcome. Again, it goes with leadership at the top with Don Day Plowman, and then you've got the leadership with Danny White and his relationship with Spire Sports, which I think is very good. But at what point 
does that leadership at Florida prevent you from not turning a program around in one, two, three, or four years, but it taking more like five or 10 to get the right people at place in place? Because they're going to have to replace an athletic director, I believe, too. Okay, I, I don't I don't think the, the, the person there whose name escapes me is, is going to be there for a long, long term based off what I hear. And you're talking about a major overhaul. And I, do you get and you know, the first thing they'll do, they'll call Steve Spurrier to get involved. That could be good or bad, depending on how it works. I just I think Florida is right now in the middle of what Tennessee went through in the 2010s. And so let's break Maybe think about worse. this in, and think about this in recruiting for a minute, Dave. You now, if you're a prospect, you don't think other coaches and schools are saying, hey, if you're if they're considering Florida, one, the NIL money they promise you may not be there. They've already broken a promise to one player. And two, they got NIL collectives that are tricking you right now down there and signing over your life to them. You don't think that's being used in recruiting right now by the Tennessees and the Florida States and the Georgias and every other school in the area that's trying to recruit those kids. I mean, that's a big deal. And I want to point out the same time this happened yesterday, a Florida defensive back into the transfer portal, Jadarius Perkins, and he tweeted out, I want to appreciate Dan Mullen and Scott Strickland for giving me the opportunity, yada, yada, yada. No mention of Billy Napier. No thanks to Billy Napier whatsoever. I, I will tell you guys this. I covered Butch Jones in 2016. Yes, transfers happen, particularly in the era of the portal. Dave, it's not common that they happen after the season started. It's 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 it, it there are red flags that are raised of someone who's played transfers after the season started. Oh, there's that's a monstrous red flag. I I no, I I, I totally agree. Um point by Lance. I want to bring that up on the screen. Too much talent in the state for them to completely fall off, but hey, one can hope. Hope or not, what if Florida State and or Miami get into the SEC? Okay? And do they still have a recruiting advantage that they do with being in the, the SEC? They are the state school, and I get that, but then suddenly your one argument to go to – Florida because they're the state school and you can play for the SEC. Well, two of their arguments are out. And I don't know that a kid thinks of the University of Florida as a state school more than Florida State, do they? No, and kids also that live in Florida, I can tell you this right now. It's not it's not what you told me about Louisiana. It's not like they it's not that they're looking to get out of Florida, but they're not desperately wanting to stay in Florida. Because it's not like their grandparents, their moms, or aunts and uncles, an entire family is in Florida. Usually Florida kids just the Florida population in general, they usually have family scattered across the country. Not like Louisiana kids where their entire, like everything they ever know is the state of Louisiana. So they're not going to feel the same loyalty to the state and staying in the state to play. 